Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom, and right now you can get this sweet scoop soldier sticker when you order over at cardkingdom.com. Just mention in your order notes that you want a scoop soldier sticker when you go to check out. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and we have a super fun one today. We got a top 10 list, and it's a good one. This is top 10 creatures that you probably won't believe actually used to be good. So I was looking through some old deck lists from the earliest days of Magic, like 1993 through 1998, and I was kind of laughing out loud at some of the creatures that were showing up in these lists, and that's what inspired this top 10 countdown. So essentially, we're going to talk about creatures creatures that by 2021 standards look really bad, but if you jumped in a time machine back into 1995, these cards were legitimately good, to the point where all the cards we're going to talk about today show up in top eight lists at things like Pro Tours and Worlds. We're not digging through, I don't know, 1995 F&Ms from Kalamazoo or something. These were like top eight cards in legitimate Pro Tour Worlds level tournaments. So our plan today is pretty straightforward. We got 10 cards. Each card, we're going to do three things. We're going to look at the card. Then we're going to look at the deck list that the card was featured in back in the day. At least one of them. Some of these cards showed up in a lot of decks and were like actual staples. So you know that I'm not just making it up. And then we will look at the modern comparisons or versions of the card, which kind of really drive home just how hilariously bad these cards look today, even though they used to be amazing. So anyway, let's count down the top 10 creatures that you probably won't believe actually used to be good. Coming in at number 10 on our list. We have Water Spout Jin. And Water Spout Jin, at first glance, it doesn't seem that bad. Four mana, four, four flying. Okay, off to a good start. However, it's got a big drawback. At the beginning of your upkeep, you have to bounce an untapped island you control to your hand, or you have to bury it. So, 4-4 four, four Flyer, not horrible, but really massive drawback. And this was a card that not only saw play in a deck, it saw play in a bunch of decks, to the point where it was seeing play in Extended Merfolk. Extended, kind of like modern is maybe the best comparison back in the day, but a format more powerful than standard, and you wouldn't think of a random Jin showing up in a Merfolk tribal deck. I mean, there's Lord of Atlantis in there, and Water Spout Jin was so good that you're just going to play it as an off-tribe card in your Merfolk deck? That is ridiculous, and if you look at Water Spout Jin compared to newer cards, it looks pretty bad. I mean, we talked about it having a big drawback. Well, now we have several blue flyers that are 4-mana four 4-4s. Four they don't have a drawback, but actually come with Upsides like Curative Mystery, Cycling, Sphinx of Foresight, Scrying, and these cards aren't even that good. Like Sphinx of Foresight, Curative Mysteries, they were not staples of their standard formats. They saw a bit of play in certain decks, but back in the day, Water Spout Jade with the drawback was a staple of various formats. When now, even upgraded versions, very upgraded versions with upsides rather than drawbacks, are kind of just meh, which brings Water Spout Jade in at number 10 on our list. Moving on to number 9 on our list. We have a creature that whenever I hit it in Momir, I consider it one of the worst creatures of all time. Or a 5 and a 6-6 six, six trample, which again, kind of good stats like Water Spout Jin. However, massive drawback. Essentially what it says is, if your opponent has an untapped creature with power 3 or greater, it can't attack, and it can't block creatures with power 3 or greater. So essentially, org, it's really big and trampling, but if your opponent does something simple like, I don't know, play a creature, it all of a sudden doesn't do anything. And org was biting a bunch of, like, aggro decks, mid-range decks on the top end of the curve, like this Naya aggro pile from Standard, and when you look at it compared to today's creatures, I mean, it's pretty sad. Like, we talked about the huge drawback, your opponent plays something with 3 power, and all of a sudden it pacifies your org. Well, now you got stuff like Ilharg, which is same stats, also trampling, same mana cost, and when it attacks, you get to put a creature into play, sneak attack style, and if it dies, you put it back in your deck, so it's like org with a ton of text, except all of its text is good. Org still has a ton of text, but all of org's text is really bad outside of trample, and that's not even considering you can compare it to a bunch of powerful red flyers, Thundermaw, Hellkites, Terror of the Peaks. Basically, there is a ton of really busted stuff you could do for five mana in red, which is making Org look pretty silly through the lens of 2021, which brings it in at number nine on our list. Moving on to number eight on our list. This is one of my favorites from the whole list. Deadly Insect, five mana, six one, 
insect can't be the target of spells or effects. So essentially Shroud. Shroud before Shroud was a thing. And Deadly Insect, it was a control finisher. Like, look at this bat control list. It is essentially the only threat in the deck. It's one of the only green cards in the deck. They're splashing primarily for Deadly Insect. And the idea is, I don't know, your opponent can't kill it, so you just kind of counter and kill all their stuff. And then get in there with Deadly Insect to close out the game. Uh, the problem is Deadly Insect, it's got one toughness. If you look at it compared to more updated creatures, I mean, of course, Cardish Tyra, it's one more mana, but you're getting Hexproof, a strict upgrade on Shroud. It can't be countered, super relevant, and it has way bigger sets. 7-6 rather than 6-1. You can even compare it to like Thrun, a 4-4, four, four, Hexproof can't be countered, Regenerator, or even like Ward Scale Crocodile, which is a creature I honestly forgot even existed. Deadly Insect probably worse than that as well, even though it has one more power, because eh, Ward Scale Crocodile has a lot more toughness and Hexproof better than Shroud. So Deadly Insect, from Control Finisher back in the day to laughably bad by 2021 standards, coming in at number eight on our list. Moving on to <laughs> number seven on our list, Orchage Spy. Orchage Spy. So back in the early days of Magic, people were just figuring out how to play red aggro decks, and Orchage Spy... That was one of the one-drops that people would play. This was the original Goblin Guide, let's say. A one-mana one-one with a pretty sweet ability. You can tap it to look at the top three cards of Target Player's Library and return them in the same order. So yes, it's an aggressive one-drop for mono red decks that has an ability that requires it to tap, and that ability doesn't really do anything. You don't draw a card, you can't rearrange them to screw over your opponent or to set up your draws. You just look and put them back, and you have to tap your aggressive red one-drop to do that. Despite that, it showed up in the earliest mono red decks, it's pre-sly, let's say, where people were just figuring out how to put together a bunch of bird spells and aggressive creatures and use that to win the game. Also notice, a couple of orgs are there as well, so another org deck. If you compare Org or Spy to modern one drops, it's just horrible. Like, the best of them, obviously, Goblin Guides, Monastery Swift Spears are hasty and have more power, but even if you compare Org or Spy to random common red one drop that shows up in every set, like Weaselback Redcap, Fearless Pup, it's essentially strictly worse than the random commons that you probably don't even know about anymore, because no one plays them there that bad. But back in the day, Orcish Spy was getting the job done in Mono Red, which brings it in at number 7 on our list. Moving on to number 6 on our list, we have Wooly Spider, and Wooly Spider isn't that bad. I mean, it's a 3-mana 2-3 with Reach before there was Reach, and if it blocks a flyer, it gets plus 0, plus 2. So it gets more toughness to block bigger flyers, which is not absolutely horrible. I mean, would you play this in Constructed today? Not a chance, but it's not the worst creature. It's no Orcish Orcish Spy, or Org, let's say. However, the reason Willy Spider is on our list is it was like a staple. As I was looking through these old deck lists, this showed up in so many different lists. People apparently loved Willy Spiders. I guess, I don't know, Blocks of Sarah Angel or something, which was probably relevant back at that time. Uh, so Willy Spider, as I mentioned, here's a green-white aggro list that played it, but it actually shows up in a ton of different lists. This was an actual staple back in the day. Most of them aggro lists, which is why I think if you compare to today's aggro greed creatures in the three drop slot, like Lovestruck Beast, let's say, it's just kind of hilariously bad. Like Lovestruck Beast, you get a 1 1, then you get a 5 5, all for one card. Wooly Spider, you pay three mana and you get a 2 3 that gets a little better if it blocks a flyer. Not even any comparison, which brings it in at number six on our list. <laughs> Moving into our top five, we have Phyrexian War Beast. Another, and what has become an archetype in this top 10 list, which is cards that don't have the worst stats, 3 mana, 3, 4 artifact creature, but come with a massive drawback. When it leaves play, you gotta sack a land and take a damage. That's a really big drawback attached to your 3 drops. So your opponent kills it, or even exiles it, and you're gonna have to go down a land. People were so hard up for anything that resembled a creature with reasonable stats back in the day. They would play essentially any drawback. Drawbacks that if they showed up on a creature today, people would automatically 
laugh at and never even consider playing in one of their decks. Back then, it's just what you had to do to get decent stats on your creature. Uh, and this one showed up in a bunch of different aggro style decks. Our friend Water Spout Jan here again, of course. I mean, what a curve. Phyrexian Warbeast into Water Spout Jan. I don't know if anyone ever is going to beat that. If you compare it to today's cards, we essentially get similar cards with much less of a drawback and even a bunch of upsides like Spark Hunter Masticore, same exact stats. Yeah, it still has a drawback. He had to discard a card to cast it, but it has protection for Planeswalkers. It can ping Planeswalkers. It can become indestructible or even like Crystalline Giant. Yeah, it starts off with one less toughness, but it's all upside. It's going to randomly gain abilities as the game goes along, which makes Phyrexian Warbeast massive land sacking drawback look pretty silly by 2021 standards. Bring it in at number five on our list. Moving on to number four on our list. This one absolutely cracks me up. Spectral Bears, a two mana green 3-3 three, three, with a pretty big drawback. When it attacks, if defending player has no black cards, it doesn't untap during your deck's untap phase. So good stats, but you can only use it every other turn unless you're up against a black deck. So this showed up in a few different decks like this green-white aggro deck, and some of them, it was kind of cracking me up. It was played in main decks, even though the meta didn't seem to be overly black focused. It's not like this was some meta choice where everyone's playing black decks and you're like, haha, I'm going to get him with my spectral Bears, I'll get around the drawback. It's like, I'll just play this because two mana three three is really good, even if I can only use it every other turn. And if you look at it compared to modern creatures, it's kind of laughable. Like Colodia Tusker, same exact thing. I guess one more green mana, except it gets to do things every turn. There's no drawback attached to it. And Colonian Tusker isn't even like a staple card. It's not some standard play, but it's not like you see modern decks Colonian Tuskering people or even Pioneer decks. It's just not really all that good anymore. So even if you erased all the drawback on Spectral Bears, it still wouldn't really be that playable of a card by modern standards, which brings it in at number four on our list. Moving on to number three on our list. Oh, this one cracks me up so much too. Going back to the early days, of mono red aggro iron claw orcs a two mana two two however it's a grizzly bear with a drawback it can't block creatures they have power two or greater power more than one is how they used to write it so this is literal grizzly bears with drawback and this wasn't just played in decks it was a four of this was like i'm gonna get you in my red aggro deck by playing a bunch of iron claw orcs and beating you down and when you look at this compared to let's say robber of the rich it's kind of laughable robber of the rich same stats, the red 2-2, two, two, except it has reach, and it has haste, and it draws you cards, and has a whole bunch of other tags on it, so Iron Claw works. I don't know, creatures were so bad in the day that apparently this creature was good, but when you look at it compared to newer creatures, it looks pretty bad. Bring it in at number 3 on our list. Moving on to number 2 on our list, we have the classic Blinking Spirit. In Blinking Spirit, a 4 mana 2-2 two, two, that has an ability where you could pay 0 and return it to your hand was actually one of the key control finishers back in the day. If you go to the early years of blue-white control, you'll see many of those don't really have any other finishers except for maybe Millstone, another card that if you're doing non-creatures could probably be on the list, like tap to mill to do that a whole bunch of times and try to win. But Blakey Spirit was like the finisher, the finisher of your control deck. You just control the game so hard that you can attack... 10 times with a Blinky Spirit. If your opponent tries to kill it, you can bounce it back to your hand, play it for four mana again, try to restart the process, try to do it again. If you look at it compared to more current creatures, there's no real direct comparison. We don't have another Blinking Spirit that bounces it back to its hand, but we do have stuff like Etherling, and I know it's the wrong color, but remember, Blinky Spirit was a control finisher. Look at Etherling. Yeah, it's more mana. Yeah, it's in blue, but it blinks itself and comes back into play. You don't have to play this, your opponent tries to kill it, bounce it back to your hand, spend four mana, do it again, your opponent has a lightning bolt, bounce it back to your head, and a bunch of other upsides, or you can compare it to like Legion Angel, a four thief flyer that sure doesn't bounce back to your hand, but when it resolves, you get to tutor another one from your sideboard, and that one resolves, you tutor another one from your sideboard. So compared to essentially any modern control finisher, Blakey Spirit looks really bad, bringing it in at number two on our list. Moving on to number one on our list, this is my favorite, this is my favorite by far, Gasban Ogre, Gasban Ogre, green 
one mana, two, two, which you read that and you're like, okay, this was like wild Nakata almost 20 years ago. This card's probably busted. However, during its controller's upkeep, whoever has the highest life total takes control of it. And the best part about Gazbet Ogre is it was played in aggro decks like Stoppy, decks that were all about dealing your opponent quick damage. So imagine how this plays out. You play your Gazbet Ogre, you attack your opponent on turn two, and you get him down to 18. And if your opponent's not not aggroing, they're like, all right, on your next turn, I will take control of your ogre. Well done. So I guess it's kind of like a green shock if your opponent doesn't have blockers or removal. It's hilariously bad. Who would possibly think of playing a one drop that donates itself to your opponent if they have lower life and playing it in an aggro deck that's all about giving your opponent a lower life total than you and trying to close out the game? It's absurd. It's ridiculously bad. And if you compare it to any one drop that's been printed today, I mean, it just looks absolutely horrible. Sure, like Hexstreaker, it starts off as a 2-1 rather than a 2-2, so I guess you can get gut shot or whatever, but it ends up a 6-6 pro everything. Even Dryad Militant, Nettle Sentinel, another 1-mana 2-2, except way less of a drawback and combo potential. And if you're willing to pay for a drawback, you could play 1-mana 3-3s now, like Old Growth Dryads. Like, sure, you ramp your opponent, but is that that much worse than playing a 1-drop that's going to give itself to your opponent after you hit them a single time? Probably. Probably not. So the absurdity that Gasbed Ogre was a four of card in aggro decks back in the day brings it in at number one on our list. So anyway, that's been our video for today. Top 10 creatures that you probably won't believe actually used to be good. So <laughs> which one is least believable? Which creature by today's standards looks most ridiculous? What other creatures or non-creatures for that matter? Do you remember that used to be really good that when you see them today, you just kind to feel sad or laugh at them because they look so bad based on how much things have been power crept over the last 27 years of magic let me know in the comments thanks so much for watching i hope you all enjoyed it and i will talk to you soon thanks for watching the video if you enjoyed it help us out by clicking that like button down below and to keep up on all the latest and greatest click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos and if you want to check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.